What up, friends? Welcome to the studio. Still a work in progress. We're going to put some art up and stuff. Uh, but we got lights and space. Mark's over there. I got coffee. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Quick, quick thought. You, uh, if you want to do your own YouTube channel, you can probably do it for like 500 bucks, right? And you can do it for less. You can literally take a camera and put stuff on. If you have something to say, if I can set yourself up and say it. Um, today, I want to talk about thinking, if that's okay with you. We will label this one as water, the study of martial arts. That's a series that I've done over time where we try to dig a little bit deeper into the study of martial arts. When we say that, there are many, cheers, by the way. Excuse me. Um, when we say that, there are many different ways that we can study martial arts. Mark's training jujitsu. He went the last couple of days. You drill things. You learn. You learn at different levels. You're a white belt. You have an open mind. You continue to learn through time. You train different martial arts to expand your big understanding of what rules are and what structures are. Learning one thing leads you to a different knowledge. Believing you know something opens the door to something else. This is everything. This is everything. Skill development is simply practicing something studying the process, getting feedback, expert feedback, wherever possible, refining your process and continuing to improve your skills. And then you do it a lot. I do one minute breakdowns. I've made 1500 of them now. I'm better at them than I was in hundreds of ways. My understanding of them, the fluidity in which I do them, the way I'm thinking. But so there's an idea that I really want to talk about today. Mark and I were, were coming into doing another podcast and we we're like, we got to talk about Khabib. We got to talk about uh, versus Dustin Poirier. We definitely have to go in and play around with Jorge and Diaz. We will. We will. I got to go away and do Bellator, but we will get to that. But I'm like, there's just something I've been, been thinking about. There's a, a way of thinking that I have been thinking about. That feels like such a breakthrough that I just want to talk about it. I just want to share it. So it is a concept called negative capability. Now, if you do hang out with me and us and you follow some of the podcasts I've done, over the last number of months, I, would, I went through periods of feeling stress because I was certain that the path that I was taking or that we were all taking to study and analyze martial arts was becoming limited, that the, the path itself had limits. And I found that stressful, and I didn't know the answer to that. I, I recognized the limitations of, of the formulas that we, were, we felt bound, bound by and that had been created, but it created a stress. Um, that's okay. Stress is where learning is, you know. Uh, Mark, uh, you were training jujitsu. Yep. In moments of stress, forced you to be better. Mm -hmm. this, this is where, this is how learning works. But you must find the places where, you know, as you go along, you'll, you'll Mark, you're a white belt, right? Yep. Yeah, he, but he's trained many other martial arts in his life at different times. So that'll allow you to learn in, in good ways. As, you, as a white belt, you're gonna gather information. You need to gather information, you need to be open-minded, you need to learn bases of understanding. Some people call them principles, some people call things fundamentals. You, you need a structure to understand the world around you. We all do. You know, kids will hear about different colors. When you're a child and you don't know what colors are, you're overwhelmed by all of this information. Later, this, this is yellow, this is red. And you're like, but those are both red. And you start to sub-identify things. This is how we learn things, right? But you start to find limitations in thinking and, and you can accept them. You don't have to do anything. You can live however you want to live. You can, you, can, you can learn however you want to learn. But when you find limitations, you either can live there or you can f decide to move on. So I, I felt this stress in my job as a martial artist to continue to understand in new ways. Limitations had been created by structures, television being a big one. You know, Before that, it was radio. Later, it's YouTube, whatever. There's structures. We, we believe we're supposed to do things a certain way. And then language gets shaped. And then you know, um, things get categorized. And now we feel like we have to work within that structure. It becomes very limiting. So I was stressed for a long time. But then I started to get comfortable in it. And sitting and thinking about you know, trying to identify what Stephen Thompson was doing 
compared to what Jorge Masvidal was doing with the limitations that we had. It's like, who's a better kickboxer? Does it, you know, like, are we, li is that all we can do? Like, must we just say Steven is or Jorge is? I mean, these limitations hit there. So over time, I just started to ignore them and then try to think in different ways. But just recently, like in the last week or so, I've come across, so I'm reading this book. Maybe Mark will find the picture of it and plop it here. Um, called Mastery by Robert Greene. Maybe there's a picture here. If you're listening on, on podcast, uh, there will be no picture. <laughs> but, uh, excuse me, I'm thirsty and I like this coffee. Um, so maybe Mark will drop a picture. This is a book. Um, it's a fantastic book. There's probably 10 books that I rec recommend a lot, right? Um, the Art of War, uh, Book of Five Rings. Interestingly, the very first time that I went on uh, Joe's podcast. First time I met him in person. We're now really good friends. And I say that, yeah, it's sort of bragging. It's true as I say that. It's like, I know a famous guy. He's my friend. But he is a good friend. He's a very smart and interesting and generous person. Anyways, that's a big trend digression. Um, on there, he, I was talking about the art of war. He mentioned the Book of Five Rings, coincidentally. And he mentioned this idea um, that um, if you know the way broadly, you see it in all things. So you start to study, say your expertise is in piano or martial arts, you start to study that thing. And in learning how to learn and in understanding how to understand, it helps you in understanding the world around you. If you want to become a, if you're an expert chef, you will have a different connection when somebody's teaching you jujitsu because you've developed expertise already. And that sort of ties into this. I, I, I know this is esoteric, that's what I do. Um, so in this book, Mastery by Robert Greene, he was talking about how over time, and I recognize this feeling immediately, how over time, as you study something different, you actually narrow your field, right? So you study medicine, you're studying the brain, you narrow it down. The brain is made up of these things. It works in this way. You start to use the language of the thing. It's a narrowing of your of your mind in some ways. And that's a good thing. You're focusing in on the details of coffee or karate or whatever. This is part of ex developing expertise, you know, reaching levels of mastery. Um, but it pays and it's important. And all the true masters in anything found ways to sort of stretch and loosen that, right? And so one of those ways is negative capability. And this is what I, I don't know I took a long time to get here, but this is what I wanted to talk about today because I find this idea right now to be, and it will sound like, it, it's impossible not to sound like this is overstating it, but negative capability uh, could change your life, right? If you change your thinking, you literally will change your life. So uh, we go back to 1817 and there's this poet named John Keats. The dude was 22 years old at this point. In fact, when he died, he was 26, but he's still considered one of the great romantic poets of the 19th century and appreciated far more after his death than he was because of the way that he thought. So in, uh, in Mastery, I'm not just gonna read this guy's quote, I'm gonna read what Robert Greene wrote about him. So bear with me here, let me have a swig of my cold brew iced uh, caffeinated beverage. It's delicious. Um, so this is um, from Mastery by Robert Greene. In 1817, John Keats, a 19th century romantic poet, was oh, actually he was seeking to understand Shakespeare. So you're 22 years old and you're seeking to understand Shakespeare. Not understand what Shakespeare's um, plays were about, but understand what his process was. Right? You want to understand how to become Freddie Roach as a trainer, or you want to understand how to become Beyonce as a performer. You can't just study Beyonce, but what you can do is study her process. Right? What did they do to become this great? And that's what he was trying to do, even at this young age. He was trying to understand how Shakespeare was capable of doing this, not just what he did. So from Mastery. The world around us, he wrote, is far more complex than we can possibly imagine. With our limited senses and consciousness, we only glimpse a small portion of reality. Furthermore, everything in the universe is in a state of constant flux. Simple words and thoughts cannot capture this flux or complexity, 
The only solution for an enlightened person is to let the mind absorb itself in what it experiences without having to form a judgment on what it all means. I'll keep reading and then we'll examine this. The mind must be able to feel doubt and uncertainty for as long as possible. As it remains in this state and probes deeply into the mysteries of the universe, ideas will come that are more dimensional and real than if we had jumped to conclusions and formed judgments early on. We must be capable of negating our ego. We are by nature fearful and insecure creatures. We don't like what is unfamiliar and unknown. To compensate for this, we assert ourselves with opinions and ideas that make us seem or feel strong and certain. Many of these opinions do not come from our own reflection, but are instead based on what other people think. Furthermore, once we hold these ideas, to admit they are wrong is to wound our ego and vanity. Should I carry on or should I go back and examine that? I think I'll carry on. Truly creative people in all fields can temporarily suspend their ego and simply experience what they are seeing without the need to assert a judgment for as long as possible. They are more than ready to find their most cherished opinions contradicted by reality. This ability to endure and even embrace mysteries and uncertainties is what Keats called negative capability. Now there is more and I will, we will dive into that, but let's, let's unpack a little bit of that. Mark, did any of that make any sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's so we start with the idea that the world around us is far more complex than we understand. Of course we know this is true. That was true in 1912, as we know now. That was true in 1415, as we know now. It was true in, you know, 27 BC. It's always been true. It doesn't end today because we know everything. We've always later realized how little we knew. So that's going to be a fact that will carry on for as long as we live and far past our death and far past our children's death. This is the nature of the world around us. So as we look back at all points in history ever, we realize this. So we also realize that today we don't know very much, right? And that's a really powerful starting point because that will allow us now. So when we see something happening, we say to ourselves, okay, that means this. Once we do that, we will find the bias, we will use that bias of belief to reinforce those ideas. Well, we'll look around us and go, okay, that is that. And now we believe that, and all other new knowledge will now start at that belief. So this concept, as simple as it sounds, is the idea that we do not jump to conclusions at least temporarily, for the purpose of expanding what's possible to think about, right? So think about that. We see something and we say, well, this, this means something, okay? And, and the simple, the very simple, not for the purpose of debate or argument, but a very simple way to look at it is, you know, half the world right now thinks, say, Donald Trump is an idiot, and the other half thinks he's the best ever. It's, it's neither of those things, right? But either one of those that we've chosen, now we're only going to find and defend things that fall in line with that worldview. Maybe that's an extreme one because people feel so strongly yeah. about that. I think a closer one like in our world is, say, for example, when they say spinning heel kicks or you know the karate, yeah. like karate stance or things like that weren't effective and don't we work. work in MMA. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. Great, great, great point, Mark. So that's a very simple idea. Wow, that's a great that's a great point. So, as long as we have studied this particular area that we're developing expertise in, this is martial arts. This will be true of coffee, and this will be true of broadcasting, and this will be true of carpets and every other thing. Um, people have said you cannot cross your feet when you do an armbar. People have said when you try to do a um, you cannot use a, a, a um, can opener because you will get armbarred. Never. Step your foot on the inside line against this. Like all of these, if you believe them, you now are start at a point where all you can do is I must always have my front foot on the outside against the southpaw or else I'm fucked. If you believe that to be true, you are trapped there. Because that's, the that's the new reality you now yeah. live in. You now live in that reality. I must put my front foot 
must put my front foot on the outside of a southpaw while fighting him. I can never, once upon a time, the arm and guillotine wasn't a thing. Like people were like, you cannot do a guillotine if the arm is in. Anybody who believed that was therefore never capable of ever doing an arm and guillotine because the fact was that's not possible. The people who then later could do it, could do it because they just wouldn't accept that conclusion, right? This is incredibly powerful. If you, if you suspend having an opinion or judgment, making a judgment, this is good or bad. If you suspend, you know, uh, drawing a conclusion, you know, um, arm and guillotines do not work. Then you can continue to open your mind and think more dimensionally about it. A great example of that is Eddie Bravo with his 10th plan system. So Eddie Bravo didn't, doesn't believe anything. Right? About anything, to be honest. Questions everything. Yeah. The problem is he doesn't question. And then this, this is off topic. For anybody who knows Eddie, uh, who Eddie is, I've, you probably do if you watch this podcast. You're somebody who follows martial arts, a lot of you. Eddie Bravo created a new arm of the tree of jiu-jitsu. The main way he did, th- one of the root abilities to create this was negative capability. The fact that he wouldn't just accept the dogma that he was told about how it worked, right? I mean, so this is innate to anything. Um, The simple examples that we're using. So we we look, I'm going to go back in little bits of this. The world around us, he wrote, is more complex than we can possibly imagine. With our limited senses and consciousness, we only glimpse a small portion of reality. We must start there. So that's why I started with the point that, you know, in... 2640, if the, the human race still exists, we will look back at everything all of us are saying with ridicule or, or isn't that cute or man, it must have been so fascinating to not understand these grand aspects of how the world works that we understand. And without that understanding, people actually thought this is how the world worked. That's what we will think of this point. So once we acknowledge that, we're like, wait a second. We know we do not, we start to acknowledge what we do not know which is most things, right? And yet, um, uh, simple words and thoughts cannot capture this flux or complexity. The only solution is to let the mind absorb itself what in, in what it experiences, right? So you're, you're doing jujitsu and somebody says, never do this or always do this. Or you're watching politics and we always, we must be for against this thing if we believe in this thing. And, and like, these, none of these things are true. These are, these are things we've created. These are rules, false rules, right? False structures. So if you can allow yourself to be in it without thinking, this means this. Oh my God, this is bad. So somebody's got you in a Kimura or somebody's kicking your leg repeatedly. You, the judgment is, this is bad. But is it bad if it results in them getting over aggressive and you finishing them? It's not bad. It's what it is, right? Like uh, Melvin Manoff, Robbie Lawler. Fuck, you know, uh, or Melvin Manoff and um, what's a Joe Schilling? Yeah. You know, <laughs> like if if me getting fucked up by you, if I'm like, oh, my God, this is bad. I'm going to get finished. Of course, it's going that way. But if you can just allow yourself to be in the reality of what's going on as well as you understand it without judgment and without opinion. So we, as we go further into here, the mind must be able to feel doubt and uncertainty for as long as possible. Okay, I think that's really important. And so what are we talking about here? We're talking about thinking. Why are we talking about thinking? Because it's fucking important, right? Like if you walk through the world and you turn on something, news, the NFL, fucking things you like, uh, shows about painting, the UFC, whatever, and people tell you things, and if you believe them to be fact just because you heard them, now you're trapped there. You're trapped in this spot. There's nowhere you can go. If you have uncertainty and allowing that uncertainty later allows you to ask questions. Why on earth would people tell me I have to keep my front foot on the outside of that guy when he's in Southpaw if it's not true? They told you because it was easy. They told you because of the, the fake structures of the medium in which they told you television had to happen quick guy was standing this way put his foot on the outside that opened up a direct line for your power hand that's a good thing they someone said it later somebody else watched joe rogan or michael chavello or whoever was saying that they said it because there was a limited time you couldn't 
explain, well, actually that's not true. And if you believe that's true and all you're going to start doing is looking for your power hand, that guy's going to set a trap where you're going to throw the power hand. He's going to slip it. This, these are higher levels of understanding. If you reject that statement, and this is, there's a th hundreds of millions of examples of this. If you reject the statement that I must keep my front foot on the outside at all times, one, you will now start to go, well, wait a second. If my front foot is on the inside, he's going to hit me with his power shot. Hey, I know what he's going to do. He's throwing a power shot. I only got one thing to, to, um, to try to slip and I can counter it. I know what he believes. I'm going to use this as a trap. You can come up with that. But then you also come up with other things. You start to, go, you start to question the, the systems themselves. Why did people say this? They said it because the limitations in time. They said it because of the structures of TV. They said it for many reasons. And those lessons, now you're thinking dimensionally. Now you're thinking at all. Before, I watch people argue this. It's like, no, you got to keep your foot on the outside. For, and like, like he had said down here, many of these opinions do not come from our own reflection, but are instead based on what other people think. Somebody thought that, and now you believe it to be true because you just followed it, and you captured it, you formed an opinion about it, and you repeated it. And now you're arguing about it, and it's actually not true. And this happens all over. This is happening all day. This is, this is Twitter. This is CNN and MSNBC and Fox News. This is what we're fucking doing. The answer to every fucking problem that you can see on the surface of the world is don't form an opinion immediately. Or if an opinion is floating around, question where it may have come from. Wait a second, I'm just repeating something I heard on CNN or Fox News or MSNBC. Why would they have that opinion? Oh, the structures of television create strong opinions. Producers say, say this. Now it started to take on a life of its own where people believe this is the only way to think. And now all of a sudden you're like, holy fuck. I think I just found the fucking secret to almost everything. I don't have to believe this. And it doesn't mean don't believe anything either. Because this is a temporary... This is, a, this is an exercise. Mark, you've been doing yoga, right? Yeah. You've been meditating? Yeah. These are exercises. What is meditation? It is a practice. The practice of meditation can allow you to practice something like, say, patience. You're standing in line, you're feeling impatient, and you start to think about patience. You practice patience. This is just a fucking practice. Wait a second, I jumped to a conclusion. Wait a second, I formed an opinion. I'm not saying don't have opinions. I'm not criticizing the, the act of having opinions. What I'm doing is saying, what if jumping to opinions, conclusions, and judgments are harming the way that you think? They're harming the way you interact with the world around you. They're harming the, your life. They're harming the world as people are arguing. I saw a bunch of shit somebody said on TV for some reason, and he saw the other one on the other thing. They have all kinds of motivations, and everybody believes they're right, and everybody believes they're good. And it seems to be run parallel with that herd mentality. You know, yeah. like everyone thinks that it's more convenient to think that too, as opposed to critically thinking. And For sure. An thought. For sure. Let's, so, this is an interesting topic, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. So. I'm going to just dig into a little more of where we were. Um, simply experience, suspend your ego and simply experience what they're seeing without the need to assert a judgment for as long as possible. True masters are more than ready to find their most cherished opinions contradicted by reality. It's like, like to believe you can never do a guillotine with the arm in. And then later discover this is true. You have to find, you have to be thrilled at that. And then that's training. It's a practice. Now, what else is there? I believe that may not be true. What else have I been convinced of? From the time that we're children, we're assigned a religion. We're ex we're assigned a belief system based on our parents who was assigned one themselves. You know, my like it. It's all just being given to you. Now, all you have to do is question it. You don't have to question everything. You don't have to argue. This is, don't take this to the extreme. This is a temporary resistance of forming an opinion on something. So um, all masters possess this negative capability, and it is the source of their creative power. 
This quality allows them to entertain a broader range of ideas and experiment with them, which in turn makes their work richer and more inventive. Right? How did I stumble upon this? Well, I started doing it, but it, there was a deep resistance. What am I doing? What's going to become of my life? Wait a second. I just don't think we can go striker versus grappler and, and who's the better grappler. It's like, that's not the truth. Who's a Who's better at jujitsu, Damian Maya or Ben Askren? Who's better at wrestling than Damian Maya or Ben Askren? If your answers are Maya's better at jujitsu and and Ben Askren is better at wrestling, and you've got all, and those are your answers, um, you now have only particular ways that you are, have allowed yourself to think. I know what you're thinking. Damian Maya is a jiu-jitsu champion. Ben Askren is a wrestling champion. I know the answers to this. But if you just refuse, you just refuse to have that opinion because it's still an opinion. And if you refuse to draw, to jump to that conclusion and just sit there in it, it'll make you feel really uncomfortable. But eventually, as you train yourself to do this, you will start asking, I swear to God, wait a second, what is jiu-jitsu? What is wrestling? Just doing that will give you incredible insight into something. Just resisting the urge to say, but fa Robin, fuck, Damian Maya's like a black belt in jiu-jitsu. He submits everybody. He's the best. He's like, like and Ben Askren, look how good Ben Askren wrestles. But wait, what is wrestling and what is jiu-jitsu? In the end, you may come to the, these same conclusions, and that's going to be more than fine. But wouldn't have the process of starting to say, "Wait a second, where do these intersect? Are they what they do? Does it matter how good you are at one or the other? Is either guy actually only doing one or the other? Because Damian Maya is a fucking good wrestler. How is that involved? In, wait a second, maybe we can't even have this conversation." Uh, of course we can have it, but maybe if staying only within this conversation, it will rob us of all types of imagination and knowledge and, and the expansion of ideas and rich connection to the topic. And you might not give a fuck about martial arts like I do, but you'll have some other topic like this. And by doing this, this will, uh, and sitting there in it, it's like, who's better at jujitsu, Damian Maya than Ben Askren? Da like you want to say, Damian Maya, but what if you can just not have that opinion, reject that opinion? Don't, because what will then happen? You're like, well, wait a second. Is it possible? Is it possible that that guy is? Well, I don't know. How could it be possible? Well, what if jujitsu is actually not jujitsu in the context of this? Wait, what if, we, and this is fantastic. What if we're asking the wrong questions? That's where you get. What if we're asking the wrong questions? Is Donald Trump the devil or is he God? We're asking the wrong questions. What's happening in the culture of politics itself? What does this lead to? How does this work? Why are people like, is this, does any of this matter? Like, those are the questions that matter. But, but by sticking only to the ones that are there, and it isn't just um, not being willing to, have, to, to train and develop negative capability that is part of the issue. It is a over, we've, we've added to it. We've even sort of armored ourselves against opening our minds in this way because we do ask the same questions. And uh, who's, you know, um, what, what, if, if Jorge defeats um, um, Nate Diaz or vice versa, does this make them the greatest of all time? Well, I mean, now what we've done is asked everybody give your opinions and then argue about them. You don't have any, 95% of the people giving them will have almost no specialized knowledge in martial arts. And we go back to like, you know, the idea that we don't actually know much. The world around us is far more complex than we can possibly imagine with our limited senses, what we see, experience, feel, and consciousness, we only glimpse a small portion of reality. In other words, you don't fucking know uh, and very much about Nate Diaz or Jorge Masvidal in the grand scheme of what could possibly be known. So what does any of this mean? Does it mean like, well, we are not allowed to do TV anymore. Eh, you can still do it. But do we want to think beyond that? Of course we can go, well, you know, who's got a better ground game, Jorge Masvidal or Damian Maia? Uh, well, or, um, uh, well, Damian Maia defeated Jorge Masvidal. If so if we went off there, you'd say, well, he's better. He won. If you believe that, 
then now better is decided by the results of a single competition. If you say, wait a second, who's better, Damian Maya or Jorge Masvidal, you start to go, well, I will not draw a conclusion. I will not jump to a conclusion here. I will not have an opinion. And you start to think about it. What is better? Where does it come from? What does it mean? And what makes things more impressive? Like yeah. Jorge not getting choked out. Is, is that yeah. more well, impressive? Is that more impressive? What does that mean? <laughs> right. what, what would that mean? Wait a second. He, he hit him a couple times. I don't remember if he dropped him, but he hit him late in that fight. Well, Amazing what if, hand fighting. What if that one thing leans slightly different and the knuckle hits him and he felt and he was out? Would that mean that Jorge was therefore the better fighter in that universe where that one punch actually changed things? Or if we try to... And another powerful thing for another day, keeping two conflicting ideas in your mind at one time. Well, wait a second, which one would it be? And the answer that you may come to, and this will be a conclusion, eventually you'll make one, uh, and later you'll be happy to find out that it's not true, but it will be, wait a second, better cannot be determined by the outcome of a single contest. Who's better? Nate Diaz or Conor McGregor? Well, they're equal because they each won once. No, no, Nate won the, sec uh, the, the second time too, bro. Now we get into opinions. Get into opinions. Everyone's allowed to have them. By all means, nobody should shut down somebody else's opinion. Have at them. But for yourself, what if I didn't take that opinion that is informed by the fact that I fucking love Nate Diaz and I hate Conor McGregor or vice versa? I fucking love you know, vice versa. We already have that opinion. Now I will find ways to, to prove it and we will trap ourselves down a corridor of discussion. Who's better? Well, Nate's better on the ground, but Connor's better on the feet if he can keep it standing. Well, if we stayed there, and a lot of things have stayed there, the NFL has probably discussed very similar, much more similar to how it was six years ago than how it was six years ago compared to six years behind, because we're all trapping ourselves in this place. You know, I don't know if, if the UFC pre and post show still exists, does it? I'm not sure. I usually tune out, but I'm I, not think, sure. I think it does. Yeah. It has to. Yeah. I imagine okay. it would Okay, so after to. we sit at a desk and we got Tyron Woodley and we got, you know, Karen, Karen and we've got some other fighter guest this fighter. week. Usually we got a guest, a, a guest fighter this week. And they say, all right, you know, tonight so-and-so tapped out this. Said, what happened? Well, you know, he landed this thing and that hurt him. And then let's, wait a second, conclusions. And I'm, it's okay, we can do it, but what if we started to train ourselves in this way? We'd start thinking differently. Wait a second. Well, this landed. As a result, it led to this. However, we don't know if he was like... Being uncertain is so powerful because it'll lead you to deeper discussions, deeper analysis, deeper study. Um, some of this... Now, so you, if, you're on, if you're on this ride with me, uh, which is cool, thank you, and it's and hey, I'm I'm honored if you're like, I don't know what he's saying for sure, but I think I like it. Or you're saying, fuck, this makes a lot of sense. Um, if you are, you're uh, you find yourself kind of sitting there wondering like, how was why is this so? Is this so more now than it once was? And I think it is. I think Mark used the term herd mentality. I think that's been shaped, and I think part of it is we, you know, once upon a time. In not that long ago, in the 1930s, we weren't all getting the same informations. We weren't all getting the same messages. We thought differently. We had open minds that developed in their own ways. Now we're getting programmed by the things that we see. Now it's starting to, to change. I think if you're 17 right now, I don't think you're only watching one of the, you know, the three news networks. I think you're finding information some, in some other places. You're seeing people, exp young people, are way out in front of this in a lot of ways. They're like, I don't believe in the structures of before. These things seem old and weird. I don't know why people behave this way. I think it's changing to some degree, but if you're between 20 and 60, you've, people have never had been more ushered down particular lines of thinking. How did it get this way? I think we started to hear messages not based in truth, not based in what's best for us, not, I think, also forced upon us what's worst either. I think it was just the nature of, you got a short time to say, we got to support it with B-roll, we got a commercial coming in, say some things, now we got to compete for attention, so be a little more outlandish, Be have some strong opinions. Most of the people you're watching on TV have strong opinions, don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And the worst part is, because of the nature of the beast, they have to do it. Like, you know, yeah. like they don't they, want to have the hot yeah. take, but they, well, have they to don't do a hot have take. to do it anymore. Because now, I mean, 
So we, we mentioned Joe. Joe has one of the biggest podcasts on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. I don't know who the other three or four are, but I bet you they're all open-minded thinkers. Yeah. I bet you they're all abstract thinkers. So there is a world in which people are saying, hold on a second. We don't all have to think in particular ways. That any kind of change we're going to do is going to begin with changing how we think. And one of the most powerful things to me is rejecting that natural and suspending your ego. We all have them. Ego is part of human, right? It's not like that guy's got a big ego. Everybody has an ego. That is part of who you are. There's no d deleting it, but there is suspending it. There is accepting that, hey, wait a second. We are, I loved something that, that, that um, Robert Greene had said here, that we're all like essentially like fearful creatures, right? Like we need to be right. We don't need to be right, but we feel like in the short term that we do, that we'll like, you know, we are by nature fearful and insecure creatures. We do not like what is unfamiliar and unknown. To compensate for this, we assert ourselves with opinions and ideas that make us seem strong and certain. Many of these opinions do not even come from our own reflection. They come from fucking somebody said, put your foot on the outside all the time because he's got a, you're going to have more power for, your, for your, your rear weapon. And it's like, if that was the end of it, also, we'd only move in one direction. You ever notice, like, if we're, if I have my left four and he has his right, and we're just gonna fight to, pe we'd only move that way, and then we'd hit the cage, and that'd be the end. We have to move in both ways. Also, if I only move one way, you know which way I'm moving. If I can throw a hook, and I'm done, right? Like that's not true, but we'll, and the people who fight about it literally have never studied martial arts, so they haven't come to this through reflection or study. They heard it, they believed it. It formed a, an opinion or a belief, and now they'll fight about it. And we don't need to fight about these things. It's, in fact, if somebody has the opposite view of you and you start to develop this capacity, you start, and you've cultivated it a little bit, and you're, and you're practicing this like yoga or meditation, you start to look at them and think, what if they were right? Like, oh, what if, if I believed what they believed, how could they have believed it? What could that shape with me? Wait a second, they, their belief and mine are opposite, but we've both been formed by the same thing. Wait, maybe we're both wrong. Powerful shit, powerful shit. Every good, and so I'm, you know, I circle back to martial art. You really think, like when you, t when you train with the, the very best, and I get to do that sometimes. I may, I'm going to do Bellator this weekend. I'll, I'll get to maybe train with one or two of the best coaches in the world. They have things that they'll tell you when you're young or new, and then later they make a point to say, don't be stuck in that belief. All, uh, uh, we saw a spinning back fist versus spinning back fist the other day. Mm -hmm. Fucking, like, before John McDessey, there had never been a spinning back fist in the UFC. Of course, it had happened in kickboxing and all that. But people just believed that you couldn't do it, yep. right? Then they believed you shouldn't do it. Then what happens is they believe it's an outlier, a rare occasion. This is always, this is the nature of, of changing beliefs. You cannot throw a spinning back fist. It doesn't work. Okay, it happened once. That was a fluke. Don't do it. Okay, some people are doing it, but it's not safe. Uh, etc. Then it becomes normal. They're spinning everything all the time. And I've said this, and I'm not, I try, it's my ego speaking here. I'm trying not to do it. The, sometimes I will say, if you go back and look at my thing, I said the next thing will be spinning attacks versus spinning attacks. Or I'll be like, you, you'll see more highlights because uh, of sp people trying spinning attacks getting knocked out than you will see people getting knocked out. I'm not fucking, I'm not brilliant. I'm just a guy. But over time, you see these patterns, and instead of going, spinning attacks don't work, or spinning attacks a thing, well, now they work, or no, that you know where this is going, because you've seen it many times. You start to see the nature of, of the movement, the dimensional movement of these things. Now you can see that in politics, and in fucking the housing market and stuff. Oh shit, the world is ever changing. My beliefs, some things, an opinion or a belief or a judgment can be absolutely true. It's like, the housing market in Toronto goes up all the time. That's not true. Right now, it's say it's going up. The moment that something happens, you know, and I, you know, we don't want something bad to happen, but something happens in the, the Middle East or there's a war somewhere or there's a famine or something terrible happens. We don't want any of this to happen. But these things happen. They're called black swan events. Then the housing market goes down. And then we say, yeah, well, it always goes up except for that one time. But if you look over forever, these things go up and down. This is the nature of it. And when they're going up, there's always 75% of people saying, this will always go up. Nothing has always gone up. Cryo is going to go up forever. You know, 
It's like, once you form that opinion, you're stuck with that opinion. If you resist that, this allows you to study martial arts differently. This allows you to study fighting differently. The nature of making content, right? So I analyze martial arts. Then my job is when it gets hard and, I, and you feel like you can't go any further, you have to analyze how you're analyzing it. This is what it is to dedicate your life to something. The problem in, say, a field like this is we've been taught if you're going to, let's say you, you decide you're going to be an analyst, right? And people do this. People who are journalists, just don't train martial arts, will decide I'm going to be an analyst. What there really is a critic. A critic casts opinions and judgments on things that they see. Can you imagine a white belt going in and trying to explain what they're seeing? They can explain what they're seeing, but only with their limited understanding, right? So I think for all of us now, if we're really going to have any kind of re bring real value, we have to look at the process itself. I cannot be a white belt and then go in and say, this is how kicks are thrown. You know, I cannot be a white belt and then go in and say, look, this guy's really great or this guy sucks. Those are judgments. Those are opinions. Sorry, I can do that. I absolutely can do that. You can do anything you want. But if you go in and start from a point and instead you went and said, I'm not, and I'm just using martial arts as an example. This is not a specific thing to my field. We could do this about movies. We could do this about everything. You're like, I am not a filmmaker. But I want to, but I love film, and I think it's cool being an analyst of film. So I'm gonna take the process of learning to be an analyst of film, and I'm gonna bring you guys along for the ride. Every new thing I discover, I'll believe is the thing, right? When you see new analysts at things, they see something more or less for the first time or based on what they've heard before, and they say, this means this. Later, now, you get a lot of pushback. And I did this years ago. And my, I've made 1,500 breakdowns. In my first 100, I would make a lot of categories. This is this. This Here is a bunch of presentation points. And in retrospect, it was like I was jumping to conclusions and thinking things that I've seen with very limited understanding or knowledge. And I had nine fights. And to me, that's a very limited amount of understanding of what's happening in there. I would jump to conclusions and say, Conor McGregor is using distance management to create this thing, and then when you sort of uh, attack, he will land the Celtic cross. He developed this. It doesn't show a tell. None of that is untrue, but it's very limiting. It's very limiting, and maybe that's okay. I, you know, for a lot of people, they're like, that guy was very entertaining, wearing a flashy suit, saying it real fast. Celtic cross, that sounds cool. He said, bink. Enjoy the hostilities. That's catchy. I like this guy. I thought, I'm down. I'm down. You know, but man, what if I live 30 more years? Like, I don't want to just say striker versus grappler and a fucking, you know, like, I don't want to just say, well, you know, Damian Maia is a jiu-jitsu champion, but Ben Askren is, you know, a, a wrestling master, you know, if he can keep his man, like, this is we're just, we're going through rituals at this point. So how do you break through those plateaus? You start to look at this. And once I, once I saw this, I started to understand the idea and I thought, I just got to tell, like, if fucking, if 2,000 people listen to this podcast, you know, and we get 1,800 views on YouTube, we're not, and, you know, I'm sure Mark would love it if we got a million views, but, yeah, and so would I. Why, why not? Of course it's great, but not at the expense of doing it in a way that traps us somewhere. If fucking 300 people of the few thousand that see this are like, wait a second, I'm, and you do it only eight or ten times, and then you think about it a few more times. I fucking made a difference. Like, your life will be better if you don't jump to conclusions, st get stuck in a point, believe that thing, and then limit everything that you could possibly know about that thing. If fucking 300 people change that, we fucking made a big difference exactly. today. You know what I mean? Yeah. We made a big fucking difference mm -hmm. today. Did we talk about, about, uh, about how good Habib is? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I want to. But we had, like... I've been traveling and working and doing so many, like there's a time limitation here and I'm, it's, it's a failure on my part. Mark's wanting to do more podcasts and, uh, and we will. We just got to build a bit more of a structure so that I understand what days I'm where and I just, this, all this, you look at your own process and you say, how can I make this thing better? 
wait a second, you know, how am I thinking? Is my thinking really valuable for me? Am I doing good shit with my thinking? Or am I fucking trapped in, I, in places that I don't want to be? Like, you know, if the whole world is an unlimited amount of rooms, you don't want to be stuck in a couple of them. Fucking go check all that shit out. There's so much going on there. But we will make a... Um, a, uh, a commitment to doing more podcasts. I'm gone for eight or 10 days, but after that, we'll try to figure out how to do a couple yeah. a week, right? I do have or, a quick yeah. uh, quick question, yeah, though, please. just uh, last, uh, on that point. Now, when it comes to limiting beliefs and when I'm questioning them, yeah. how much of this is now on the onus of the coaches mm. to be accepting and say, you know what, maybe, like try it this way, yeah. let's see. Because there's a lot of trainers, that probably not, any, not that much anymore, but we're... Very dead set. No, this is the way. This is how it's done. Yep. So, what is it? Currently, it is mid to late 2019. There's going to be a, um, there's going to be this big phenomenon. There's going to be a lot of writing and attention around it or podcasts or whatever about all the new uh, coaches that are like having top 10 and maybe even champions. Coaches you've never heard of that are like having breakout fighters. Maybe it'll be 2021, but I suspect it'll be in 2020. There'll be five of them all of a sudden. Not one or two, but five. Why? Because the best coaches, and there are many of them, they will be in that constant state of change. They will. This is, this is how they got this good. Some, as they age or make money or get tired or sore or injured or, or discouraged or had their champions. Yeah, just or, get jaded. Yeah, jaded. Start, and we all can be like this. We, and we all will go through phases of this. Then you just kind of keep doing what you're doing. There are, there are fundamentals, but even they change. The fundamentals change. Once upon a time, this was fundamentals. This, keep your hands up. Keep your chin back. That was fucking fundamentals. That wasn't wrong, but now we're correct. You know what I mean? This, how we, how we box or, or fight or whatever, that's not, well, now we know when we're set for life. We will one day look back at fighting today the way that we look at this. Of course we will. Of course we will. You know, unless, there, and there are reasons that may not happen. If right now part of the thing that pushes the ability to keep changing is there's commerce there. Right? So people can be paid to continue this study. Um, I have a feeling if I had a, a bartending job, um, I would still, we would still do this a couple times a week. But not everybody would, right? Some people, you know, w will do their job because there's money in it. Some coaches, I, I know coaches that are friends that it's like, the fact that they get paid is beautiful, but they're compelled to study martial arts and to teach people. And uh, one of my favorite coaches, I trained with him today. I've, I mentioned him before. His name is Evan Boris. He's um, at Striking Concepts on Instagram. And he, you know, he was teaching me, a professional Muay Thai fighter today, and then two, um, two people that are like hobbyists who are very enthusiastic. And he had just as much passion for, the, for those two as he did for, for me and my friend, who's, um, she's a Muay Thai fan. And uh, just as much passion, because he gives a shit. It's, com it's, it's a compulsion, you know? People who are, it's a compulsion, they will make, continue to make that shift. They will be so excited. When I, I didn't, so the last time I saw Greg Jackson was in New York, and he was cornering Mick, uh, Patrick Mix, I think, young guy in his gym, who's he's got a new vibe too. I like this kid. He's, I can't wait to see him fight again. It was a Bellator show, and I was like, Greg, can we catch up? He's like, yeah, I'm here. And we did it. Uh, time and everybody's moving in all directions. Sometimes you will get to train with some of these coaches. Sometimes let's get to sit and buy them a coffee and pick their minds. I'll, I'll guarantee you if you catch up with Greg right now, he's like, oh, it's so cool. So much shit's changing. So there will be these ones that change. But there's going to be this whole wave of these young coaches who think differently, right? They've always thought differently. Now, their limitations will be they, they suit today's thinking. Just an offshoot that maybe will make sense here. I work for DAZN, and a lot of the people who work there are young. And it's really cool to work around these people, like this fucking 29-year-old woman. You're like, how the fuck do you know so much about digital shit? Like, and the, her whole way of thinking will be shaped from new ideas, from the new realities that we're living in. 
So she doesn't, she doesn't have any attachment to like, well, you know, we're going to make a rundown. We're going to shoot these things, you know, make a 22 minute segment. We'll pull these things in. Let's make sure we get an establishing shot. All of that nonsense, old TV doesn't apply. So she's never done it. So she's fucking cool and new to zone will say to me when we're talking, they're like, we do a company like ours must have some people in their forties, even fifties, even sixties. They have to be young minded and never changing, but they need to be there to say, this is a constant state of flux because even a new thinker can get trapped there. It's like, yeah. Um, like Steve Pay's guy. Um, uh, Alex Cooper, uh, Alex Cooper. We had him on, there's a sit down with him. Um, he's, He's got a different way of thinking. Now, he is obsessed, too. You know it right away. So he's ever-changing. But his risk at the time was, hey, I got Stipe fighting different. If he starts to fall too in love with that, he, this is how you fight. Dominic Cruz fought different. I assume Dominic Cruz is now different than that different. Because if he wasn't, we all understand it now. No, maybe not. Maybe we don't all understand. But we at least all have some fundamental understanding. But new coaches, new people come up. They can, they, they're not bound by the old belief systems. So you're going to see these young fighters with young coaches doing fucking mind-blowing things. You're already seeing it, but you'll really see a lot of it all kind of start to, to, to the momentum of it to build within the next six months. To yeah, a year. because they've been trained like that from the beginning, top yeah. up from white belt onwards. And, and so is the coach, Yeah, right? The coach came up. Some coaches developed by once upon a time, they were a 12-year-old kid. And then they got obsessed with jujitsu or karate or boxing or fighting. Like now, even mixed martial arts, I don't know if anybody notices, but I don't even use that term very much. I really don't. Uh, because it feels like a thing. It feels like Matt Hughes and George St. Pierre, yeah. right? Like, and those, yeah. they're great. Those guys were awesome. But it feels like a time. And this is not intended to be judgment towards the UFC, but they feel a bit like a time too. Right? Like, it's like, you know, things don't change as much in there and in MMA and in the understanding of MMA and the language around MMA as the martial arts really are changing. So the, I see these young new ones. I'm like, look at these crazy young martial artists. They're doing this MMA thing, but they're, they're young and they've expanded and grown beyond what MMA represents like in Sean, my mind. Sean O'Malley, for example. Yeah, Sean O'Malley is a, a great example. He's, he's, a, he's a weird little martial artist, you know, and he's, he's expanded his ideas and, and he's not an MMA fighter to me. He's fighting in MMA, but I don't see him as Freestyle an MMA fighter. fighter. Yeah, he's just a martial artist. He's just a martial artist. Now, that can be undone. And the, you see the UFC like that. You see MMA like that. You see some of the old coaches. And some of them, man, like, you know, I'm going to, to Inglewood this week. So it's, it's fun. I'm glad we, we're having a bit of talk about martial arts with the context of what we just said. So I'm going to Inglewood this week. And... Patricio Pitbull is fighting Juan Archuleta. Yep. Before I like pass observations, trying not to draw conclusions, but you will find as you practice this, it's very difficult, right? This is the, the practice of it is what's important. You will not be perfect. Also, you don't want to be perfect in the idea of suspending um, conclusions and opinions because eventually you must make one if you're going to do any kind of work at all, right? Um, but so to some degree, Pitbull is fighting in a, in the ways that he's expressing fighting is not that dissimilar to how he and others expressed fighting seven and eight years ago, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and, and again, that's always bearing in mind that there are things, millions of things I'm not seeing, right? We see moments. What, like how long did we see Patricio Pitbull fight recently? A minute and a half? He landed a punch behind Michael Chandler's ear and Mike went down and that was the end of it. What did we learn? Fuck all, right? We learned that guy hits hard and he landed a cool punch and it was great and he showed up ready and he was fucking... But what did we learn about what he, how different he could be? We learned nothing, right? So uh, other than that, it was a great, fantastic punch. Uh, perfectly placed at a, just the right time and expressed with full commitment. Um, so when I say he, he feels, I get what you're saying. It's like it's yeah. almost like his style is defined by an era. Like, yeah, like he's in, yeah. like he belongs in the Jose Aldo era. Yeah, exactly. You know? And I, and I, and I sure hope that doesn't sound 
disrespect. Yeah, I yeah, fucking yeah. admire that guy. Like I'm obsessed. Like I can't wait to see him fight. What it actually does for me is, first of all, I'm like, is that true? I don't, you know, I want to suspend that opinion. I want to not immediately like make that conclusion so that I can keep thinking. If after suspending it, there's still tons of evidence that much of it is true, then you have to start thinking dimensionally now. So why the fuck is he winning? How is he beating everyone? Why could he literally win through their fifth? Well, there's not 15 more other guys now. Four have lost in part of it, but there were 15 men. At the end, he could still be champion. Nobody disputes that or nobody should doubt that. If that's so, how is that possible? Is it because fundamentals are the key? I could put that on a blackboard and say that's so, and I could show you lots of reasons that would be so. If I made that conclusion and I said Pitbull is such a badass because he has killer fundamentals, he's always in balance to be able to throw, you know, these are, these are t ways I will ex uh, express a one minute breakdown. He keeps himself in balance, he sh shifts his weight and he does that thing. And those are the observations that I made, and that's, there it is. But that's just a fucking random conclusion that I can make. And a year from now, I might think differently. And I'm missing most of the information. But then you start to, if you keep that open, you start to expand into other places. Well, maybe it's a mindset thing. Maybe it's a powerful belief thing. Now you start to open all of these. I, I know we're talking about Pitbull, and we will continue this, but this, uh, this was a little detail. So Einstein was fascinated by the apparent paradox of two people observing the speed of light. One person, uh, um, one is pursuing it, traveling at the speed of light, and the other one is observing it at rest on earth. How it would appear the same to both of them. Instead of using all the available theories to kind of gloss it over or explain it away, for fucking 10 years, 10 fucking years, Einstein just contemplated this paradox. This is the, uh, notes I've made from, from uh, Robert Greene's uh, mastery still. For fucking 10 years, Einstein contemplated this paradox in a state of negative capability. This allowed, in, in operating in this way, he was able to consider every possible solution until he hit upon the one that led to his theory of relativity. He isn't just fucking smart and came up with a theory of relativity. Directly connected to that was 10 years of uncertainty and 10 years of not jumping to conclusions or like judgments or saying this means this. Like, think about that, right? Think about that. So if you, instead of saying, wait a second, Pitbull feels like he's from an era, that maybe that era is better. And now I can find ways to say that's so. Or I can say, well, it's about fundamentals, it's about balance, it's about power. He's got crazy power. Some have it, don't, some don't. You know, uh, I can say any of those things. And if I, and once upon a time, the reason we're all in this state is producers said, I need you to be more authoritative. I need you to say these things with certainty. You're the expert. I've, this, this has been said to me many times in television. You're the expert. I need you to make a choice, have an opinion, and be strong about it. We've all fucking watched this. I lived it. Literally. A guy, and, and the first time this ever happened to me, and I think I've told this story before. Ben Henderson, I was saying, if Ben does this, this could mean this, but if he checks the leg kicks, it could lead to this. But this guy's got that. And this was still all opinion. This is 10, this is 11 years ago when I worked at Fight Network, uh, when I, this happened. I expressed a whole bunch of, of opinions the way that we do today in television. Uh, but there were a lot of them. I didn't want to jump to a conclusion. This guy will do this. The producer pulled me aside after and he said, you're the expert. And I was like, am I? I only have, like, at the time, I only have like four fights. I'm good at TV. Um, I like to think about these things. I'm interested in all of this. Um, but I'm not, nobody's an expert in their first fucking 10 years of trying to analyze anything. You know, you're not an expert. Uh, and also, if I am an expert, as you're telling me, producer, and his name was Dave, he was a good guy, there's no judgment against him. He learned what he learned and he taught it the way he taught it. If I am, then let me say this, because in my expert opinion, I think all of these things matter. It's like, no, no, we need you to make a call. So once you start doing that, 
Now you've limited yourself. Yeah, you may, your ego will feel good. I mean, this guy is good at this, but bad at that. I think this, I, my pick will be that, you know, Jorge by whatever, or Nate by whatever, one of those things happen. My ego's gonna feel great. A couple people will think I know what I'm talking about. But if I really wanna learn things, we will suspend it. This motherfucker waited 10 years to come up with that. And you couldn't have if he'd have jumped to any other conclusion. So, so uh, Pitbull, is it because of his, his incredible fundamentals? I don't know, maybe. Does he, is he even a fundamental-based fighter? Because I've only seen, I don't know, 48 minutes of him fighting. Nah, I've probably seen an hour and 15 minutes. You know how, how much that is? That's fucking nothing, right? Like, we watch guys fight sometimes, and we see two and a half minutes, and we say, oh, they made massive improvements in their takedown defense. What the fuck are we talking about? They could have had the best moment they had, and for the next 16 weeks in the gym, they can't fucking stop a fucking wrestling moment. We don't know what we're talking about. But the key is we're claiming we do, and we're talking like we do, and then we're believing it. And then we go out into the world, and we watch people do that, and then we do it. And then we argue on Twitter, and this is not good. <laughs> like, this is not good. This isn't good, right? So, so I don't know if that's the reason that Pitbull is so good. I don't know if he's able to generate power in certain ways because I've only seen him knock out seven guys and in the whole world of the nine, you know, the 140 that he sparred with, maybe sometimes he hits, he doesn't hit those guys very well. I suspect he does, but, but is it maybe then his mind? Now, is it, and, but by being able to examine, is there something different in the, in the makeup of the fabric of his musculature? Does his brain work differently? Is it something as simple as, and I've seen this, I believe, where people who believe with full commitment that something will work, commit to it in a more pure way, which makes it work. There's all of these things at play. And they're all so fucking fascinating. And you know how, when, when I'm gonna know the answers to all these things? Never. I'm never going to know the answer to all those things. And you know what? I'm okay with that. Because when I'm 71, I will have such a deep understanding of what's happening because I was able to, to in my late 40s and early 50s, learn about the, I force myself to understand this idea. I force myself to do it by continually sitting through my podcast while Mark's like, he's doing it again. And then people would be like, dude, like you keep saying, you can't just say striker versus grappler, but like, what do you, you do you say? I don't know, but it's been worth it. The last 40, 50, 60 of my one minute breakdowns on my Instagram or, or um, uh, Twitter or wherever, I'm breaking through all kinds of plateaus. I'm seeing shit that I've never seen and I'm understanding it and I'm connecting to it deeply. Now I know if I continue this in 10 years, I'll be like, I can't believe I thought that was about the, the priming of the nervous system to be able to, to express it through the musculature of that core, using the ability to see in the way that I, I can't believe I thought that was so. Really, it's this psychic fucking thing that we didn't understand in 2019. Now we understand there's a psychic fucking thing, whatever it's gonna be, right? One day I'll look back, but I'll tell you, I couldn't have got here if I didn't reject the structures that were imposed upon us. I also couldn't have got here if, and, and sometimes you gotta, wow, look, look, look at that. Sometimes you gotta really go in and wonder things that you think are good and bad. There were all these times I was pushing and I would say, I, my goal is to commentate the UFC. If that had happened, or, you know, I would push to, like, to uh, do those pre and post shows at different times years back. If that had happened, I could never have got to this. I would be sitting because people would tell you, nah, you know, you got to say which one. Talk about their ground games, you know, compare them. Nah, you know, you're the expert. Make, uh, make an opinion and make it strong and then fight with um, Kenny or Mike or whoever about it. I want you guys, I want you guys, that, great job, guys, great show. The way you guys were, were really, it's like, what, what the fuck are we doing here? None of this is true. Damian Maya is a better jiu-jitsu player than Ben Askren, who is a better wrestler than him, or is he? What the fuck is wrestling? What are these? These are belief systems. Wait a second. Like, in the end, we'll probably just decide that those things are true. But by rejecting it and rejecting that automatic opinion because we heard other people say, most people who will argue, I'll watch them argue, I'll watch it, it's interesting, about the fact that, say, Damian Maia is the best jiu-jitsu guy, have never trained a moment of jiu-jitsu in their life. They don't literally know 
anything about jujitsu, but someone said this. Now, and in his case, they said it many, many, many times. They believe it's true. It probably is true. But by resisting it, it will allow you to think dimensionally. If you think dimensionally, you're gonna break through all these things. You're gonna get new ideas. Those new ideas will learn to other new ideas. What's happening is instead, we're not only being stuck in boxes, but we're being stuck in boxes in those boxes. We also think we have to use certain terminology. I've watched for the last, I don't know, five or six weeks. Like, I'm, I'm thinking uh, Paul Felder, uh, Jeremy uh, Stevens, mm -hmm. um, there's two or three others. I've watched these guys said, yeah, we can have a rematch. Every single one of them used the term run it back. Yeah. They said, we can run this back if you want. Let's run it back. You guys want to run this back? I think we can run this. Why the fuck do we have to use that sentence? It's not the only one. I did have a, a weird interaction with, with a coach um, on a, uh, a one-minute breakdown where I talked about, and there are different levels of coaching, different styles of coaching, different level layers of thought. You know, like we don't have to have opinions on who's better or worse. Even through their results, you can win awards or have a champion. There are different ways, but, and I, fuck, it's so nice, but I get, I get these, amazing compliments from these fighters and coaches if you, and I again this probably I'm my ego uh, I feel it right now like that I want to like brag but man if I showed you like on my things like it's just all blue check marks who like my shit it's really crazy it's really crazy and they send me these messages about how much they like it and why because I'm out there doing fucking annoying work a lot to a lot of people not for me uh, in a lot of cases, trying out things that are true and not true and that fail and set you back and that are hard and sitting there for, this guy fucking sat there for 10 years trying to fucking deal with that paradox. You know, I'm like, and a lot of other people did too, that paradox and many others, and they never came through. They never got the theory of relativity. I don't suspect I'm ever going to come up with the theory of relativity as it relates to fighting, but I will suspend that and I will sit there and search for it. But yeah, this randomly somebody kind of involved literally wanted to debate with me when I was talking about um, Henry Corrales and Aaron Pico and they were like bro it's just brawling and I was like is it and then upon a little further conversation they're like yeah but I see all what you're saying yeah of course yeah I mean of course this is also happening and this is happening but bro it's just brawling and my my thought was and that's very rare it's an outlier it's very rare I get very little of that from people who are sort of deep in, in martial arts but I, I accepted it and I thought, okay, well, maybe there's some value in what they're seeing. But in the end, my thought was, we will never benefit. We will never have richer understanding or a deeper ability to provoke thought or, or share ideas by using less words or by limiting ourselves to only words. Run it back, bro. Let's run it back. Ground and pound. You know, I got to get in the mix. These are, that's just shit. Dana White said once, and he's a very compelling person. He's got a very compelling personality. And people with compelling personalities, sometimes we mimic them. I don't know if you ever noticed, but Brendan Schaub and all his friends, they kind of all, and even the people in his comment section, if you glance at it, they all kind of use the same language. Yeah. Cock and like, <laughs> for sure. You know, like, he's the kind of guy who, like, all that, yeah. because they're compelling people. Compelling people say things in ways that sound interesting and then we feel we have to say them. Nobody's got to fucking say, run it back. You could say, yes, we'll fight again. Let's have a rematch. Why don't I, I'd be glad to fight you. Um, I mean, there's fucking a hundred billion ways you can have that conversation. It doesn't all have to be that, you know, it's like, well, what happens? I think I'm in the mix. Who the fuck? What does that mean? What does that mean? It, uh, you can use it, but if you only ever use the words that everyone's using, now you're limiting your thought, you're limiting your expression, you're limiting yourself. And the old classic is that, that um, the Inuit, people used to call them Eskimos, have, and it depends how, which Google search you use, but 12 or 17 words for snow. Do you think they have a deeper ability to express snow than us who use the word snow. A fucking course they do, right? Why? It's important to them. It's, it's relevant to their lives. It's deeply meaningful to them. You know, we have to add other words. Well, it's yellow snow, it's melty snow, it's soft snow, it's hard snow, it's crunchy snow. They have all these different words, you know? And we, my job is to study things, but language is a deep part of my job too, as I see it. 
I don't really have a job. I just do a bunch of stuff and it seems I have some expertise in something and, and people, it has some value to some people. But as I see it, language is a big part of my job. A language, it doesn't matter if I understand something, if I can't explain it in a way that's meaningful to you. In short versions, like I do in my one minute breakdowns, and then in long, complex, convoluted, fucking meandering versions, right? That's part of my job. But, you know, you need to use more language. You can't, you can't express more complex ideas using less words. Sometimes, through years of work, starting with big ideas, slowly refining them, you can come up with things that are meaningful in a sentence that through years of poetic ex like, you know, examination of the topic, deeply connecting to it, understanding it in a meaningful way, and then finding just the language to express it, you can do that. But it's part of a process, part of a process to get there. You know? And then those words lose their meaning. When somebody said that guy's got a great chin, once upon a time, people said he can take a punch. He's, uh, you know, he's got a powerful jaw. He moves away well. He defends himself. Uh, he he makes he's he uh, slips punches well. He rolls with punches well. He 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 makes it so that your strikes don't land with full. And then later, people generalize that into meaning a chin, and we all understood what they meant. We're like, oh, that guy's got a great chin. Later, we started to think chin was just the, the defining feature that that word meant. You know, like, I punch you, you got a good chin there. And I've literally had this, and it's not a judgment at all. It's like, people will say to me, this happened. Does this guy have a great chin or does that guy not have a lot of power? And it's like, we're really trapping ourselves here. Like, there were, it was, I mean, he moved away. This guy was off balance. He's exhausted. This other dude, you know, moved his chin with it. He was light on his feet. There's fucking hundred things, but we can't think about them because we're trapped. Anyways, this is, uh, I think I'm going to stop, go for a walk, think about some of these things, gather some of them, and then re-examine them. I'm, I'm not sure, I feel like some of the information that we're doing has to change shape. Like, when, even when we label something or we talk about something as, you know, pre-fight analysis, I know in the end, I'm not doing it in the way that people think of analysis. So we might almost have to look for some new words, Mark, or some new, you know, thoughts on yeah. Jorge versus, because again, a lot of people don't actually know what analysis means. If they think fight analysis means compare and contrast these seven attributes and then give a strong opinion or a conclusion on who's better and then make a pick, I don't think that is analysis. I think you just, we've misused that word We've misunderstood what the goals were. That structure was created for the purpose of people being able to assign things and, and be able to control the video used in television broadcasts, and we don't need to do any of that anymore. Mm -hmm. I think analysis is thinking and exploring ideas in abstract ways, in concrete ways, in macro ways, in micro ways. I think that's analysis. But I think for a lot of people, they actually think it's that, that trapped down a hallway thing. Yeah. So I think, I think we need to think about that. Um, I'm just happy to be back here and hanging out with Mark and, and expre expressing some thoughts. I wish I didn't have to go. I mean, I'm excited to go away. Oh, yeah, I talked about Pitbull and keeping an open mind. And in the end, was that analysis? I don't know. I think so. Uh, analysis doesn't require conclusion. In fact, for a little while, we're going to do very little concluding and opinioning. Of course, we're going to go back to that because you have to. If you're going to do any kind of work, eventually, I'm showing you process. This is what this is what this has ended up being, for a lot of reasons. As I've come to think about it, uh, I'm alone. Now Mark hangs out and we chat, and he points me in a few directions. Some really good today. Pointing it to to um, that sort of moments of jujitsu was really powerful stuff. So it's very valuable. But and we've talked about too while we're on this. We've talked about looking at expanding sort of the technology that we have so we can kind of do some live streaming with people on Google Hangouts or other things. We're gonna do that, you know. Um, but being here alone and thinking. Uh, has led me to these really, I'm very thankful for these places. I hope that's, I hope some, um, if you're still watching, you're either crazy or you're interested. So 
Uh, and definitely let me know that you heard crazy. Just write crazy or crazy and interested, and I'll be like, fuck this motherfucker. Like hung out for the whole thing. That's so cool. And I do appreciate it. Uh, and that I am very curious about that because we don't know. Like, you know, are we giving you some kind of value here? Is this is this helpful? Like, is it interesting? Uh, I do want to know that. But at the same time, it's fucking valuable for me. So I'm really thankful for it. But so I've I've teased a few of the things we're gonna work on. You know, I've got lots of friends that I'm in touch with now on, you know, fucking 15 of these fighters are in touch with me via Instagram or about my one minute breakdowns almost every day. So, you know, I could rotate twice a week, you know, fucking Mike Perry would love to come on every second week or every third week. The dude's fucking fascinating and he's learning and thinking on different planes all the time. People will look at that guy and they'll make a judgment about what they think he is. He's so much different than what you think he is. You know, um, I uh, have access to all these Bellator fighters now, so we can bring them on. So we're going to work on that. Just, I know uh, you, um, what was the words I used? Uh, interested or whatever. You types that just type that down. I know fucking you, you guys are so patient already, but please hang with us. We're going to expand what we're doing. We, we built the studio thinking that this will be like part of our relaunch. It's a soft relaunch, but we'll do a much firmer relaunch as we get into October and do bigger and better things. But man, do we fucking value you guys. Like, really, you're still here right now. You're my fucking, you know, girl, boy, friend, you know, appreciate you. Uh, please uh, send us some comments or thoughts. Different, if there's somewhere further down there you want to go, or that you've got some advice and you've stayed this long, I don't need your advice that uh, I'm just me uh, meandering. Then I'm just not for you, but you wouldn't be here if that was the case, unless you're crazy. Uh, but thank you. We'll be back uh, in about 10 days. And uh, if, you, if anybody sp ever spots a one or a two minute clip in here that you think is valuable or you think is interesting alone, clip them and feel free to share them anytime. And I'll share them as well on Twitter and Instagram, as long as I don't sound crazy, as long as it's not like, look how nuts this guy is, because I'm a little, you have to be on the fringes if you're going to hope to find something new. Anyways, I'm rambling. That's what I do. Uh, if you want a t-shirt, it's shoprobinblack.com. I'm bringing five to my friends at Bellator, which is going to offset. We're so close to them having paid for all themselves, and I'm going to offset them by giving some to friends. So if you want one, enjoy the hostilities or flim flam or something at shoprobinblack.com. Thank you. Uh, hit the subscribe button. We'll be back later. Black out. Friends, if you're here right now, that means you watched the whole video. That means you liked it or you're crazy. But either way, please click subscribe and then hit the thing. It's somewhere around here, the notification thing. So you get notified when a new video comes up. We're going to be doing a lot more stuff and we want to do it with you. Black out.